Everybody at the Temple News was awestruck about him. I mean, he was a leader because he was not only a passionate, committed newspaper person, he really had ethical standards. And he, and I think he imbued us all with, with that kind of standard and that commitment to do the best journalism we could. This kid came from Philadelphia by way of Montreal, and but when he got to Southern California, it was the promised land. Um, he really understood the entertainment industry and he loved the entertainment industry. What made him such a great leader was uh, whenever there was a crisis, he would galvanize his entire bureau and produce the coverage that was most relevant to Wall Street Journal readers. Hi, excuse me, Steve? Yeah. Hi, Jim Leinfelder, Neat Stuff. Oh, hi, Jim. We've heard about your Star Wars collection. We're here to do a story. Oh, okay. The first time I met Steve was when he was working on his first Star Wars book from screen to, to collectible. I thought it was great that Steve was going to write it because he was an avid Star Wars fan and collector, major collector. Um, but he was also a very grounded person with a real job and a great career at the, at the Wall Street Journal. So we were excited that somebody with that sensibility was going to be able to work in, in the world of Star Wars. This okay. is the museum. <laughs> When we were looking to find somebody to head up fan relations, I thought Steve Sansweet would be a great person to ask because he has the love of Star Wars, he had this huge Star Wars collection. At first there wasn't a whole lot of stuff, but now I'm having trouble fitting everything into a 5,000 square foot barn. And he seemed to be interested in the position. I couldn't believe it. Lucasfilm's head of fan relations, Steve Sansweet. It was like the closest thing that I'll ever get to hitting the jackpot. One day, we got a call from George Lucas. And we had been invited to be a part of the Rose Parade. So he thought, wouldn't it be great to get 200 stormtroopers from around the world and be in the Rose Parade. It's a great idea until you really go to execute. And of course, Steve was the main person who had to rally all these troops from around the world and go through the difficult process of selecting who was going to get to come. Over here, we have a complete stormtrooper squadron, and we've got 60 flags uh, represented here. And Steve did an amazing job. And to see him up on stage with George was just a great moment. His life was really touched by seeing Star Wars, as many people's were. He has that passion. It, it has an emotional significance for, for him that's very deep. When you hear him talk about Star Wars and talk about the movies, he really connects to the story. It's really about the young boy who can look outside of his hometown to go out into the larger world, and Steve has certainly done that. Next to Lucas, he's the rock star of the Star Wars toy industry. Steve has a great relationship with the, the, the fans. You know, he's, he's been at this for a long time, which gives him a lot of credibility. I see many uh, familiar faces, old friends, and a lot of new friends. He is their connection to Lucasfilm. He's their connection to Star Wars. He loves Star Wars like they do. They trust what he says. They believe in him, and that's a very special relationship. And that's something that you can't do from a PR department. You need to do it from somebody like Steve. I'm thrilled that, that Steve's been uh, inducted into the, the Hall of Fame, you know, both for what he accomplished uh, uh, with the Wall Street Journal and then what he's done journalistically and as a fan and collector for Star Wars, which has had a huge media impact. He's truly a Star Wars ambassador, but he's also showed what you can do when you really have the passion for something. 